Good morning. It is Monday, April 13th, and the title of this morning's devotional is The Only Crown Jesus Wore. In Matthew 27, 29 through 31, it says, And they plaited a crown of thorns, and they put it upon his head, and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, the King of the Jews. And they spit upon him, and they took a reed, and they smote him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took off the robe, and they put on his own raiment, and they led him away to crucify him. In this scene here, what we see is that the Roman soldiers are mocking Jesus. They are making fun of the fact that he claimed to be king. Um, and yet, very shortly, they find that uh, he was more than just king of the realm that they were thinking of. When the earth became dark and the earthquake came, they realized he is the king of the universe. They had a hard time accepting him as king. You know, as Americans, we have a hard time accepting a king. In fact, that's why we cross the ocean, is because we wanted to get away from a king, a king that was a tyrant, a king that did not have our best interest in mind. And so we don't like to be ruled. We want to be self-ruled, self-governed. And um, But as a Christian, that's exactly what we've done, is we have submitted to Jesus as our king. But we have to ask the, the question is, does my life mock him or does my life magnify him? The Bible is very, very clear on the subject matter that uh, he is a perfect, righteous, loving king. He is sovereign in all of his authority and eternal reign. Luke 1, 32 and 33 says, He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Will be, his kingdom will have no end. He is the king of the Jews, the king of Israel, the blessed one, the king of kings and lord of lords. Ephesians 1.20 says that now Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is ruling on high. And so he is in charge of everything. So what does it mean if we submit to Jesus as our king? Well, then that means that our citizenship, according to Philippians 3, is in heaven now. And so we are now citizens of heaven. So we, we don't, we don't uh, submit to the rule and the reign of the prince of the power of the air. Is we submit to a higher authority. And so our lives will recognize that this world is not our home. In Matthew 6, 19-21, it, it encourages us not to lay up uh, for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust and thief can break in. But it says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And that is true. Uh, what are the things that we treasure? That right there will tell us where our heart is. We... Um, we need to see Jesus as more than a role model, more than someone to pattern our lives after. A few years ago, there was the WWJD, what would Jesus do? And that, that, was, that was a good thing. But if that's all he is, is your role model, then uh, you're never going to submit to him in the tough things of life. And uh, so he's got to be more than just a role model. He has got to be the sovereign king of your life. Is he the sovereign king of your life? Does he control every aspect? Is his word final in your life? Are you looking to him for your protection, your provision, and your purpose in life? Or are you looking at this world? Um, take some time to reflect it, because oftentimes we're not really honest with ourselves about this. The word of God, according to James, is a mirror. So let it reflect who we are. And if you have a mentor, Ask them the hard questions. An attempt to put a link uh, on our Facebook page to a part of a sermon that I think will bless your heart. S.M. Lockridge talks about God as his king and what that looks like. So anyway, um, if you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, if he's not your king, then I just want to tell you that there is another entity that's ruling over your life. And uh, 
you might want to really think about that. And uh, today, maybe you can make the decision to allow the king, that is the victor, the one that uh, they mocked was the one that rose out of the tomb three days later. He had victory over death. Uh, the other entity, we call him the devil, is going to be thrown in the lake of fire, and all those that follow after him will be there as well. So, who's your king? Where is your citizenship? And where are your loyalties? Um, does your life magnify the king of kings, the lord of lords, or does it mock him? Take some time to contemplate these things. Thank you so much. Um, like and subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow.